Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifix where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. We are starting this episode with what could be good news for coffee drinkers. A new study from Queen Mary University of London found that the caffeine in your coffee might be doing more than just waking you up. It could be helping your cells age more gracefully. Scientists looked at how caffeine, which is the world's most widely consumed neuroactive compound, works at the cellular level. They conducted the test on fission yeast, which is an organism that shares key cellular systems with humans. The scientists discovered that caffeine activates a system which is called AMPK, which is a cellular pathway that's responsible for regulating the growth and metabolism in your cells. Basically, when cells are low on energy, AMPK kicks in to help them cope, slowing their growth and boosting repair systems. Caffeine helps activate this, thus indirectly helping cell growth and aging. The Queen Mary study also builds on earlier work by the same research team that showed that caffeine influences a growth regulator called TOR. But now it appears that caffeine works indirectly by flipping the AMPK switch instead. So that cup of coffee might not just perk up your brain, it could also be giving your cells a nudge towards healthier aging. Next up, Flinders University in Australia has come up with a safer and greener way to extract gold not just from ore, but also from e-waste like old computer parts. A paper in Nature Sustainability Journal by a group of scientists from chemistry, engineering and physics describes a method that is non-toxic and requires only cheap materials like salt water. Traditionally, gold is extracted using highly toxic chemicals like cyanide or mercury. Cyanide is used to dissolve gold from crushed ore, while mercury is used by small-scale miners to form gold-mercury amalgams, which are then heated, which release poisonous vapors as byproducts. These methods pose serious risks to people and the environment, causing mercury pollution and toxic waste. The new Flinders method uses a compound commonly used in water disinfection to safely dissolve the gold. It is activated by salt water. The dissolved gold is then captured using a recyclable sulfur-rich polymer. The process is clean, reusable and works on various waste streams. The team now plans to scale this up and help small miners and recyclers move away from hazardous practices. Next up, a scientific method that combines ancient history and chemistry for modern-day conservation of elephants. As we know, to protect elephants from extinction, the global sale of elephant ivory is banned. But mammoth ivory, which comes from ancient remains preserved in permafrost, is still legal. The trouble is, the two types of ivory can look very similar making it easy for traffickers to smuggle illegal elephant ivory disguised as mammoth ivory. Current methods like radiocarbon dating or DNA analysis to tell the difference are expensive and slow. Now scientists from University of Hong Kong have developed a fast, affordable method using stable isotope analysis to tell them apart. Isotope analysis is basically the analysis of ratios of different compounds like hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur in these samples. By studying the specific isotopes of hydrogen and oxygen, the Hong Kong researchers found that they could reliably distinguish elephant ivory, which is mainly from tropical areas, and mammoth ivory, which is from ancient Siberia. The reason is interesting. The isotopes are basically traces left behind by the water that the animals drank in their environments. And the water from both these environments is very different. This new technique is a step towards closing a major loophole in the illegal ivory trade. Finally, new research led by scientists at the University of Southampton reveals that Africa is slowly being torn apart by rhythmic pulses of molten rock rising from deep within the earth. Don't worry, this won't happen for at least a million years. But researchers have discovered these mantle surges beneath Ethiopia's Afar region. And they say that it's helping to form what could eventually become a new ocean. Using volcanic rock samples, advanced modeling and chemical analyses, researchers found a chemical striping in the mantle plume beneath Afar that provides evidence of this pulsing activity. These findings help scientists better understand how deep earth processes like mantle flow 
are tied to surface events like earthquakes and volcanoes. Published in Nature Geoscience, the study shows that these upswellings of hot mantle rock are not steady. They pulse like a beating heart, influenced by the movement of tectonic plates above. Over millions of years, as these plates stretch and thin, they'll eventually break apart, marking the birth of a new ocean basin. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into The Print.